Good evening everybody and a welcome. Hello there. Good evening. Welcome to the open to, to the round table forum. Now, a very resounding welcome. This is the 41st forum in the round table series at New South Wales Parliament House. That means we've survived 40 of them. These forums on cutting edge social and political issues are sponsored by Western Heritage Australia and we're a discussion and study group aiming to raise public consciousness and awareness on all issues of concern to thinking people and that's you otherwise you wouldn't be here. We're not affiliated with or linked in any way with any other organisation group or group political, religious or promotional in any way whatsoever. We're strictly non-profit. All of your donations go into the expenses of running the forums including the rental of this room which is um, considerable. Uh, the opinions expressed by our speakers are entirely their own opinions and do not necessarily reflect our own point of view. And this also applies to any comments or questions that come from you, the audience. Strictly your own opinions only, not ours. Now tonight's topic as advertised is, is this the Chinese century? I'll repeat that. Is this the Chinese century? That's a very topical subject. as There's been a lot in the news lately. A lot in the news, particularly in the world news on that topic. And our speakers are Mr. John Hugh, Mr. Warren Wang and Dr. Andres Rodriguez. And they will speak in that order. Now the questions from the audience will be invited when all three speakers have finished and not before. And when you want to ask a question, you raise your hand and you have all confidence and patience in me because I will not ignore you. I promise you will not be ignored. Uh, just be patient and come up to the mic. Uh, and if you don't come up to the mic, your question will not be recorded on our website and that would be a terrible tragedy, particularly if you ask a good question. We don't want to miss any of the talent. Now, um, only one question per customer. We've got a tight little evening here. Uh, keep them short and snappy and to the point. No speeches if possible. Uh, now the topic of forum number 42, I'll tell you now, which will be very early next year, is artificial intelligence. That's the topic. Artificial intelligence. A little bit off the beaten track for us. We're normally quasi-political, but this is something different. And we don't yet have a date, because although there has now been, I've been informed that the parliamentary calendar for 2018 has just been released today, but it wasn't released in time for us to do uh, the normal um, organisation we do to book the hall and set a date. So we don't have a date for forum number 42 yet. But if you put your details in the book out front, then you will be contacted, so you'll know when it is. It'll, it'll certainly be in February or March. It won't be later than March, and it won't be earlier than February. That's artificial intelligence. That's form number 42. It's an old tradition. We've been going for 12 years. Now, um, our first speaker in this lineup is Mr. John Hugh. John Hugh came from Shanghai in 1990, he studied in Australia, he worked in various Australian government agencies and he was a councillor in Parramatta City Council between 2012 and 2016. He's director of the Australian Chinese Community Association. I'd like you to welcome Mr. John Hugh, please. Thank you, David, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm John Hugh, and uh, perhaps uh, you saw me, me um, my article, my story, on the weekend Australian on Saturday, this uh, last Saturday, uh, talking about the uh, story about uh, my uh, conflict with the Chinese consulate. Um, anyway, um, come to. Uh, Let's uh, go directly uh, to the topic. Uh, I just uh, set the timer. Um, is this the Chinese century? Interesting uh, 
many people raise this uh, issue and uh, question, and uh, I think it's because um, China now is the second largest world economy, but uh, the first one, America, is still 60% or something uh, ahead of uh, China. Uh, and we can see a lot of uh, Chinese investments, especially around Sydney, and many, many uh, Chinese people are buying up properties, and uh, perhaps uh, many people are blaming uh, uh, we Chinese uh, to uh, push the property price up. But uh, one thing I can assure you is I can't afford it myself. Um, and there are a lot of uh, Chinese tourists around as well, buying a lot of stuff, uh, even our milk powders. Um, and when you go to the uh, supermarket and the department stores, we can see uh, plenty of merchandise made in China nowadays. When I came in 1990, that's about 30 years ago, look back then, you can hardly see any Chinese investments, any uh, Chinese tourists, and not many stuff was made in China. That was only 30 years back. Now, let's look forward another 30 years. That's not even 2050. And do, if it's a Chinese century, then obviously those three phenomena will keep growing. Otherwise, you can't claim that. Now, that's if you want to, they want to keep this trend going, you got to have two major assumptions made or to turn to reality. One is the Chinese economy, the domestic, domestic Chinese economy shall keep growing at high speed from now and, you know, for at least 30 to 50 years. Um, second assumption would be the, the, uh, the Chinese government, the current political system and the Communist Party shall stay in power, if not forever, should be at least half a century. Well, we all live in Western uh, democracy. I don't think, uh, you know, the current uh, well, Liberal Party can hang on with the power and after, you know, even after next election. So how do we make such big assumption? So I believe both of these two assumptions are myth. And uh, so therefore, I believe the answer should be no. It won't be a Chinese century. And there are two major areas to consider. One is um, economy, obviously, and second is the political spectrum. Now, the economy side, the Chinese economy, it is very strong at the moment, but it's fra fragile. Why I say that is, uh, from my understanding and uh, observation, the local Chinese economy mainly based on two things. One is the uh, real estate. They push the price high up. Now, a, an apartment in Shanghai, a two-bedroom apartment in Shanghai, is a lot more dearer than a house here in Sydney. And consider how much people earn over there. You know, on the streets here, we see a lot of uh, rich Chinese people hanging around, uh, throwing money on the uh, property, making investments, and uh, buying a lot of stuff. Because of the population base, I, I believe, you know, there are even more poor, poorer people back in China. So if you, the real estate price is so up, so high, a lot of people can't afford. And the other one is based on the cheap labor, manufacturing. 
making a lot of stuff made in China, manufacturing um, at a cost of very low labor cost, or sometimes we can see um, media reports uh, talking about slave labor, but I, I don't have any proof, and I'm not accusing you know, Chinese government is behind that. Um, another cost is the environment. See the, a lot of smogs in major cities in uh, China. I remember, you know, when I uh, visit Shanghai a while ago, the moment I step out of the uh, airport, I can notice straight away the difference of uh, air quality. And you can also taste water is different. So I believe this kind of economy, <coughs> if they keep going like this, it's not going to last. And it's already happening, um, especially in Canton. A lot of um, uh, manuf big manufacturers are looking elsewhere to move their uh, factories to. Um, I heard uh, the Taiwanese people, they love to uh, move to Vietnam. And uh, the biggest uh, uh, mobile phone maker for, uh, well, the mobile phone maker for iPhone is the company called Foxconn. They have about over one million workers in, Ch in China. And they, I s saw on the rep report, uh, on the news, they are considering to uh, set up a factory in India. So, because I think it, the Chinese government is doing the right thing to look after their people because they, they need to improve people's um, living standard. So, pushing the wages up, but it always have two blades. You know, when, when you look after the people pushing the wages up, the cost is um, pushing the cost of manufacturing up. Then uh, the business people will move elsewhere. Um, another one is back to environment again. They, the government over there should be wake up, and I, I believe they are, to start to uh, try to minimize the damage or have, you know, stop the further damage to their environment. Now, these, all these measures are good for the, for the uh, country over there, but uh, it's going to hurt the economic growth. And um, we also look at, uh, like me, us, I'm a Chinese and I'm supposed to be a Chinese Chinese, live in China. But for the last 30 years, I live in Australia. And I'm not alone. There are a lot of people from China migrated overseas. And they are usually young and talented people. <coughs> I'm not trying to uh, paint myself <laughs> like that. But yeah, it's true that if you don't have money, you don't have skills, you can't move. Now, when, when the young people and, and ad more advantaged people start moving out of the country, plus the uh, thir over 30 years of one-child policy, the impact to the country is aging population. So all these factors are, negative, are going to be negative impacts to the further economy, economic growth for the country. Um, being um, heavily manufacturing based, it's usually low skill and lack of in innovation. You know, by looking at the, frankly speaking, or looking around our modern way of life and a modern economy and a modern technology. How much, how many uh, new inventions, new way of uh, manufacturing or tech, new technology was 
were invented in China. Even um, you know, even uh, the, the computer we use, operating system, is not from China. Uh, all the core technology is not from China. So this is uh, you know, I studied MBA here. You know, th by theory, if you can't control the core eco economy, uh, sorry, core technology, and you um, don't have the move or the courage for innovation, you're always going to be following other people, not leading other people. And um, secondly, the political system. In China, they call soft power. The influence, ideology, influence to the human mankind. Yes, when we talk about the, uh, the soft power, the first thing come to our mind is Confucius. But uh, I'm not sure, I personally don't think Confucius ideology has much impact to our modern life. And even communism itself is Western ideology. Currently, I would, wouldn't say um, uh, there's no political system as is perfect. No one is perfect. Even Australia, we've got a lot of problems. But at least we have our system to can correct by ourselves, which is democracy. And we can, if we go a bit far, we can correct it. If Liberal Party goes too far away, we vote Labour in. And when Labour is doing a lot of bad stuff, we vote Liberal in. But uh, it's not going to happen. It's not happening in China, it, you know. So that uh, authoritarian system itself, I don't think it's going. It, it's acceptable by most people, especially in the West. It, yes, uh, when you are elected, uh, yes, it's nice to hang on the power forever but then you start your head your head gets swollen i had the experience head gets uh, gets swollen you you st try to um think uh, you know you are always right Pe people are always wrong then uh, you know you, you stop listening to people and um making a lot of mistakes And the, the political system also intervenes over there, those, those local businesses, they have been heavily monitored or intervened by the government officials over there. And, and a lot of, uh, even a lot, lot of um, the um, Chinese companies invest overseas. Like in Australia, th th there are quite a few uh, real estate companies building skyscrapers. But if you really look into it, by looking at their data, there's hardly <coughs> any making money. They're all losing money. They're not making money at all. So the government, heavy government in intervene into the economy, like uh, control the price, you know, dictate you know, what you can make, what you can sell, and where you can invest, and how to invest, it's not going to help the economy. We all understand that. So, it's, I, I think a few years ago when uh, the, uh, uh, when China was the king uh, to join the uh, World Trade Organization, eh? WTO, W yeah, uh, they try to get um, everyone uh, to acknowledge them as a market economy, but 
they, are they really market, market economy? Absolutely not. So I believe if the trend, they, ap apart from the political system, if they want, uh, want to keep growing their economy, the Chinese economy, both domestically and internationally, th those uh, international in Chinese investments, a thorough econ economic reform is needed to make their economy more modern and make the uh, have more the technology more uh, inno innovative and the government over there I think uh, I believe their lack of mandate to do that and they don't they are not capable to do that because if you want to have deeper economic reform the first thing you need to do is the political reform which they cannot afford to do so so based on these uh, um, these uh, um, ideas uh, my observation I believe the coming century well we are already almost 20 percent into the century I don't think I don't believe this century would be a Chinese century. Um, interestingly, a uh, few uh, couple of days ago, a friend of mine uh, was uh, discussing this uh, topic with me. He said, uh, "Oh, because uh, uh, China has got the uh, uh, very um, now the military power is very strong. It's they demonstrated their military strength in the South, South, South China Sea." I said to my friend, I said to friend, my friend, you know, many other countries have tried so. Well, the British, they succeeded a few hundred years ago, but not now anymore. Last century, Comrade Hitler uh, tried. Did he succeed? Everybody knows the answer. Japan, the Japanese tried. I don't believe, you know, in the next century, North Korea or any other country can dominate the world by military strength. Thank you. <laughs>